but I do want to thank you guys again for being here um, for this session of Pioneer Webinars. It's the first one of 2022, which is so exciting. We're keeping it rolling uh, because you guys seem to really enjoy um, being here for these, which I appreciate so much. So I do want to introduce myself. My name is Chelsea Risco, and I will be your facilitator this evening. I'm the e-learning specialist here at Pioneer, um, and I've been with the company for seven wonderful years. Um, during my time off, I enjoy spending time uh, in the mountains, uh, exploring, traveling with my husband of 10 years, and uh, trying my best to keep up with my three-year-old son, who is a little wild child. <laughs> um, as you'll notice here, I also change my hair a lot. And a fun fact about me, I am six feet tall, so I am taller than my husband. So if you ever see us in public, you can probably spot us out pretty quickly. <laughs> But enough about me. Um, I want to take a moment to thank you for being here, for taking this time out of your Tuesday evening. Um, I appreciate each one of you guys investing first in your financial health goals for yourself. And really just thank you so much for allowing me to be a very small part of that. So if you guys are ready, we are going to jump right in. So who currently has a resolution regarding your finances? If you have one, go ahead and throw it in the chat. I want to hear if you have a New Year's resolution that uh, regards your finances. I'm sure everyone has something about their health, because <laughs> who doesn't? Who doesn't have a health one? <laughs> okay, great. We have paid off student loans once and for all. Oh, what a freeing experience that will be. That sounded like a song. What song was that? <laughs> that is so exciting for you. Student loans, man, they linger. They linger and they're annoying and it's time to get rid of them. So that's exciting. Um, saving for a down payment on a house. Yes. Um, and raising your credit score above 630. Yes. These are all very obtainable and very great goals. I'm so glad you guys are here. Um, this is great. You guys have actually a really great uh, variety. That's so exciting. Um, some of you guys are paying off debts. Some of you guys are saving for down payments and also uh, working on that credit score. So that's great. Well, good. So whether you guys are limiting debt, uh, you're learning new spending habits maybe, or you're building a savings, um, these are all choices that can really change your life. They can affect your entire well-being from your stress levels to your physical and mental health. It, it truly does have a bigger effect than I think any of us realize. So kudos to you guys for making that step. So tonight we are going to discuss how to set goals that you can stick to, what to do when things get hard, and the importance of celebrating your wins to keep you on course. So let's start with step one. Making a roadmap. We need to set a goal. So goal setting gives you direction. Without a goal, you might have you might have great ideas of what you think you might want in your life, what you want it to look like, what you want to achieve, but you have to have something to aim at. You know, in an archery competition, the archer isn't aiming just for the random spot in the forest hoping for the best. No, he has a target and he has his eye on it and he's aiming for it. So this is your opportunity to pick your target. What is the destination of your arrow? Once you've done that, then you can decide on your destination. You know what that arrow is going to be hitting. You know what that target is. Then you can make a plan to get there. You can practice. You can get better. You can figure out what the best way to arch an arrow. <laughs> I maybe should have done a little more research on archery before this. Don't come at me. Okay. The point of this is I want to know what the destination for your arrow is. You guys have shared that. And I think you guys are all pointing to the right thing. So the step of picking your goal, it might seem kind of small because it's kind of just pulling something out and saying, this is what I'd like to do, but it's really not small at all. Um, not only is goal setting linked to higher achievement and self-confidence, but even the simple act of writing down your goal can make it more likely uh, that you'll actually succeed with that. It's a lot of mental stuff. We're going to talk about that a lot tonight. And uh, when it comes to choosing your goal, uh, don't be afraid to pick a longer term goal. Yes, obviously, we're talking about the New Year's resolution. We're talking about um, taking on 2022 and doing the best we can, right? Um, but I want to say... That's great if you can get complete it in a year, but I don't want you to be afraid to start making steps towards your big goals too and just allow 2022 to be the real stepping stone to that long-term goal you've been dreaming of, like saving for the new home you guys talked about or getting out of debt or purchasing a new vehicle. 
So you guys said that you had resolutions. I want to know about uh, what kind of goals you have. So I have a poll for you. And looking at the screen here, you guys can see, talking about the different terms and how long. So I know you guys might have some 2022 goals, but let's take it a little bit bigger. Um, and this is multiple, so you can pick more than one. How many of you have short-term goals, which are one to two years? Mid-term goals, which are two to five years? Or long-term goals, which are five years or more? So you should be able to see the poll. You should be able to click on your answer. And if you have lots of goals, you can click all of them. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, I'll do a quick countdown. So you guys can get your answers in. Five, four, three, two, one. Awesome. Okay, let me share the results to you guys. So as you see here, everyone has a short-term goal, which is great because we already talked about that. <laughs> but uh, it looks like uh, a quarter of you guys have midterm goals. So you're looking at goals between two to five years. And another quarter of you guys um, also have some long-term long -term goals, excuse me, which are five years or more. So what we're going to talk about tonight can be applied to any of those things. So make sure you take notes for all of that. Thank you for participating. So next step is you're gonna be specific about what you want and why you want it. Deciding on a specific goal, getting clear on your priorities, they're the two real keys to success here. Um, when it comes to your money and your financial situation, I just really wanna encourage you to set aside some time to reflect on what you really want to accomplish and to be very specific. So quick raise of hands. How many of you have heard of a SMART goal? A SMART goal, S-M-A-R-T. Okay, a few of you. Okay, perfect. Yes, I'm gonna go ahead and lower those hands. So if you've heard of a SMART goal, can you tell me what SMART stands for? And if you can't remember all of them, maybe just throw the ones you know. <laughs> So SMART, SMART goal, what does SMART stand for? Okay, we got the M for measurable, yes. Oh, here they come, yep, specific, measurable, attainable, good, good. Has anyone got an R or a T for me? The T kind of gets switched around sometimes. Oh, yes. Okay. So funny thing. Yes. Reachable, realistic, and relevant. You guys got all of them. Yes. <laughs> Anyone have a T? Oh, you're getting closer and closer. I'll give you a clue. There's an app that is very popular <laughs> with the youth of America, and it makes a sound that also a clock makes, and the clock tells there we go. Timely. Yes, yes, yes. There you go. You got it. It is timely or time bound. So again, just to review SMART goal, uh, SMART stands for specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and timely. So those are supposed to be the things uh, that will help your goal be more successful if you can really identify each of those parts. Um, so it really is a great way of breaking down that goal. But if you're still not completely sure, I actually suggest using the three W questions. I won't make you guess these. <laughs> the three W questions are, what do you want to accomplish? When you look at your life in one or three or even 10 years, what does it look like? Who are you? What are you doing? What things are you proud of, right? Then the next W is for when will you achieve it? When would you like to have this goal completed by? And what really makes sense in your life with where you're at? Do you have kids right now? Are you nearing retirement? Are you a kid yourself and you're just figuring out life? You know, this is really going to uh, drive this question. And then lastly, this is a big one. Why does it matter to you? What about this goal brings you hope or peace or pride? Uh, is, it, is it to bring you and your family safety? Is it to make yourself proud? Is it to uh, make a dream come true? Maybe you want to start a business. Maybe you have a dream car that you've loved since you were a kid and it's getting close to the time where you can finally buy it, right? You need to ask yourself the why. The why is going to be the anchor to your goal and it's going to be what you come back to each time things get hard. So it's very important that you take the time to answer these three W's about your goal. And that way you really can have 
something to come back to. It's going to be your cornerstone to help you build this goal on top of. Um, and so you can really nail down the specifics of your goal by answering these specific questions by using the SMART method as well. And you might even get inspired to pick a new goal. Maybe the one you picked wasn't right for you because of this, but um, what we're trying to do is get you to a place where you can really be passionate about the thing that you're chasing so that you can have the endurance in order to achieve it. Um, but I just think using these questions will bring you some clarity. So hopefully those are helpful to you. So next, since we are talking about your financial resolutions, um, they say visualizing a dollar amount can actually lead to success. And so what we're, we're thinking here is whether it's a specific figure to save, whether it's, it's amount you need to pay off, or maybe it's how much you need to earn in the year ahead. What you want to do is you want to keep that figure alive by writing it down and, or, or even like tracking it in an app. Um, you can use a dry erase marker to write it on your mirror or make it the lock screen of your phone. Uh, whatever you need to do to keep it at the top of your mind, um, a real dollar amount makes for a real goal. And don't forget to give yourself a deadline while you're at it <laughs> because you're going to need that motivation as well. So I'm going to see who's brave tonight. <laughs> no pressure at all. Please do not feel pressured to do this. I just want to see if you want to take this step and write down the dollar amount in the chat. I don't need context, just a number. I wanna see if we can make this real for you in this moment. <laughs> I'm not, I was afraid if anyone would, I'm afraid people would be like, eh, this is too personal, but I hope you know this is a safe place. This is somewhere where you come to be encouraged and, and to be um, given knowledge that can hopefully help you. So, oh, look at you guys. Okay, I don't need to pep talk you. <laughs> look at these brave people. Okay, so you have just under 4,000. We have 30,000, yes. I'll tell you guys mine, mine is 24,000. 10,000 in emergency savings, yes. That's a big one. I think a lot of people are chasing that one, the 10,000 emergency savings, yeah. Oh, you guys are so brave, thank you, thank you. I hope this was more of just a real moment for you to say, you know what, here's the number, I'm putting it down. And what I'm gonna encourage you guys to do is again, write it somewhere so you can continue to see that number. So it's top of mind and you're continuing to make those steps towards it. So thank you so much for sharing. So here's a big step for you. You need to be positive and realistic. So you need to dream a little, you need to be excited, you need to be positive, but you also have to be grounded, right? So goals can challenge you and help you grow into a new future. And that's why choosing a goal that is attainable is another very important part of success. So let's say you've chosen a clear goal with a very positive outcome, such as in five years, I will be debt-free. Um, I'll pay off my entire debt of $12,000 so that I can focus on just enjoying my family instead of worrying about money, right? And I think any of us could probably resonate with the idea of letting go of that worry about money it's so ingrained in our part, like just part of our lives um, as humans. I mean, money is such a pivotal part of our lives. It, it, I mean, why do we go to work to make money so we can buy the things, right? Like it is so big a part of our lives that sometimes I don't think we give it the attention it, we need to give it um, mentally and emotionally. And so, you know, the idea is maybe your goal is to be free of worrying about money, is to feel safe, is to feel secure, whatever that is, um, I just want you to be sure that you're specific with your goal to make sure it is realistic based on your situation. So you can't say, I'd like to be a multimillionaire. I mean, maybe you could, don't get me wrong. Don't let me crush your dreams. I'm just saying, can you actually start saving $400,000 every month so that you can become a billionaire? Probably not at this moment. Maybe if you won the lottery, I don't know. I'm just saying you need to be realistic with your goal so you can set yourself up for success. Hopefully I didn't just like totally bomb anyone's dreams of being a billionaire. I'm so sorry. If I came here and I crushed your dreams, you can just leave me a bad review afterwards. Okay. <laughs> okay. So let's talk more about being realistic. So given your income, your debts, your expenses, ask yourself, is it realistic that I put $200 towards my goal each month? Is it possible to pay it off even faster or get to my goal faster by saving 250 a month? Or do I need to be really realistic right now and say, you know what? My budget is only going to allow for $100 right now. 
the thing is you have to stay positive and be realistic. It's going to show you how much you can devote to sticking to achieving your goal. Do not, please do not, please do not set yourself up for failure by jumping in too deep. Take an honest look at your situation and make a wise decision, even if it might take longer. Um, can anyone share ways that they use to see what amounts are realistic for their goals? So right now, let's say you're like, you know what? Here's my goal. Here's my amount. I know that I need to break it down and figure out how much each month, how much I'll be putting away each month. Um, what's the first step in that? Does anyone have any insight on that? Your first step, if you're wanting to figure out how much you can put away each month towards your goal. No wrong answer here, by the way, because everyone kind of does their finances differently, so. Put away something, even if it's something small, definitely. Yes. We're going to get more into that. I have a really, I have a really big spiel on this. <laughs> um, pretty much like you said, I work backwards to figure out how much I need, right? So you take the big amount, break it down into smaller chunks. Yeah, we've done some other webinars that are even um, more about this specific topic of how you break things down for goals. So make sure you check out our YouTube channel. Uh, you can see um, there's a, I think I've done two webinars now where I talked about how to really dive into that specific thing so you can figure it out and do the math and do a budget and everything. So if you need any help with that, make sure to reference our YouTube channel. Cool. Okay, great. You guys are right. Yeah, we just, you have to break it down, right? So also important is celebrating, right? We can't just like go through this and just be like, oh man, I'm going to be happy on the day that I get there, the day that I get the house, the day that I buy the car, the day that I pay it off. Yes, that is going to be so fantastic. Do not get me wrong. But my friend, you have got to celebrate those milestones too. You've got to celebrate on the way there because you're doing big things, even if they're small things. You know, making your goal measurable will help it stick. But then when you keep track of your progress, that's really what's going to help you stay focused and motivated. So try tracking progress on an app or maybe you're a spreadsheet kind of person or even just a notebook. Uh, for me, excuse me, it helps uh, me because I'm very visual. So I need to see the future getting like closer and closer to me. So I do things like these sheets that I found on Pinterest that you can color in as you get closer to the goal. So, you know, maybe it's like the, the thermometer that, you know, you fill in to get to the top or it's the jar or it's the stars or whatever works for you. There's free resources out there. The point is this kind of tracking is going to help you break your goal into smaller milestones. And that's going to make it easier for you to see your progress and be less intimidating. Um, for example, a mini resolution might be to pay off one credit card. So making smaller changes over time is often going to be a lot easier than trying to make this massive change all at once. Um, I'm excited that one of my attendees is here because my quote that I'm about to share is actually from her, but I heard it from her originally. <laughs> Have you guys ever been asked the question, how do you eat an elephant? I'm curious if anyone knows the answer. How do you eat an elephant? It's not as gross as it sounds, I promise. <laughs> There's actual wisdom behind this. Yes, one bite at a time. Let me tell you, as grotesque <laughs> with hot sauce, yes. As grotesque as that, that saying might be, if you really dive into it, surface level. It is talking about breaking things down into manageable pieces. You take this big honking thing and you break it down into bite-sized pieces. And that's the same idea that you guys need to go at your goals with. So <laughs> thank you for playing along with that. Um, hopefully I don't get reviews about how, <laughs> how people, how people uh, <clears throat> enjoyed my webinar talking about eating animals. Okay. <laughs> Here's the thing. Let's get back to celebrating. It's important to celebrate your successes along the way. Um, celebrating your little wins actually trains your brain by reinforcing your habits, your new habits, uh, which will make it easier for you to stay on track if you hit a bump in the road at some point. So, you know, since you've broken your goal into smaller pieces, why not attach some award, rewards for your hard work? So for me, it might be like a coffee from my favorite coffee place. Uh, maybe it's a $5 shopping spree at the Target dollar section 
for my husband, it might be a bucket of golf balls in the driving range. But what you want to do is you want to find these low dollar rewards that will trigger your brain to get excited when you're hitting each milestone. So I listed some of mine, but what could some of your rewards be for hitting your milestones? And again, obviously we're talking money, so we're not going to go spend like hundreds of dollars on shoes or something. Uh, what are some low dollar items you can think of that could be your little milestone rewards to keep you motivated and engaged? Coffee. Yep. <laughs> Man, I would do anything for coffee. I think it's really sad. Yep. Definitely coffee. Uh-huh. Or lunch out. Yeah. There's a specific coffee that's a little more expensive at Starbucks that I don't get because it's, well, I love it, but it's very expensive. And that has been a reward for me in the past is just to get the fancy, the fancy coffee. But yeah, lunch out. If you, you know, if there's a place you love, that's a low dollar one. This sounds crazy. I think I've, if you've been here for a while, you've heard me talk about my ADHD, but I am very much into buying things and it doesn't really matter if they're big or small. So sometimes I give myself $5 just to go to the dollar store <laughs> and I'll pick up like some pens or like some notebooks or something or like some candy. And like, that's enough for me. So I know myself well enough that I can literally just give myself $5 to go to the dollar store. But the point of this is you need to find what that thing is for you. What gets you excited? What makes you feel giddy? What makes you feel like a kid again, where you're just, you feel like you just got your sticker on your report card. You know, it's, it's one of those things where you feel accomplished and you should, even though, you know, a lot of people, I think get so stuck on the big goal that they're like, forget all these tiny steps. I'll, I'll celebrate once I get there. For me, I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm doing work every day on this. I'm going to be giving myself some rewards along the way because I'm working hard for this. So I encourage you guys to find what that is for you. And when you're writing down your goal and you're breaking it apart, make sure that you put those rewards on there too. So you have um, things you're looking forward to. All right. Last up, you need to make and work the plan. Many resolutions often go by the wayside if they serve as a goal without a plan. So just an idea, just a thing to reach for without any actual plan, no plan um, that could outline how you're going to accomplish your goal, which is what you need. You need to know how you're going to accomplish it. So here's the key. Keep it simple. So <laughs> the plan might define how much you're going to, you will spend towards your goal, how much you're saving, how much you need to pay off. It'll tell you how often you'll need to make deposits on it, how often you need to go put the savings in, how often you need to make a payment. And it'll tell you the method you'll use to transfer money towards your goal. That's really all you need. You really, really do. I mean, it sounds too simple, right? But really, that is what you need. From there, you can kind of know yourself and know what things will set you up for success. But you need to know how much, how often, and how you're going to do it, what method. So for instance, Automating monthly payments or saving or savings goals is proven to help people stick with money resolutions. So the less that you have to make decisions and the more that things happen on their own automatically, the easier it is to be successful. So breaking it down and setting yourself up for success is the key to staying in this for the long run. It's like when I was a kid cleaning my room, I would look at the whole room and like this massive mess because I'm not a very clean person. <laughs> This is true for my house now. What am I talking about? Anyways, I feel so overwhelmed by it. I just feel like, oh, it's so much. And I start like shutting down. But I knew that if I could just shrink it down and just focus on just one thing, if I could just focus on just my desk, it actually would start momentum in me that, that I couldn't stop until I was done. And I'm an adult now and I still have to do this. I still have to just start with one small thing. And once I start, I know that I've got the momentum to finish the job. So same idea for your goals, figure out where to start, make the one step, keep taking steps and you're going to get there. Okay. Sorry, cough break. <clears throat> Here's the thing. You just need to choose one habit to change at a time. Just one. For example, if you need to reduce your credit card spending, you're not going to throw everything you have at paying off the card if you are just trying to work on your spending habit. Because no, you need to focus on controlling your spending habit as your first milestone. Then you can move on to setting aside money for that payoff. And then once you do that payoff, you can put that payment towards another debt to begin paying it off quicker. 
This idea is sometimes referred to as the snowball method, very Dave Ramsey-ish. Um, but that's why your friend Frosty is here. He's here to encourage you because even he started as just one snowflake. Okay, I stretched a little bit on that one, but you get the point. Small things can add up. Okay, thank you, thank you. Please come back, please don't leave me. Okay, this is gonna bring us to our final thought. Uh, James Clear, the author of Atomic Habit says, every action you take is a vote for the type of person you wish to become. No single instance will transform your beliefs, but as the votes build up, so does the evidence of your new identity. So friends, let me just be the first one to tell you, it is okay to fail, but it is not okay to give up. And I'm gonna be straight up, you are not gonna do this perfectly, you won't. Perfect does not exist. I'm preaching this to myself, but that's okay. Seek to make each choice moment by moment to achieve the goals you're chasing after. If you fall down, just get right back up. If you fall down again, get back up again. If you fall down again, get back up again, and so on and so on and so on and so on. Do not give up. Keep going. At the end of the day, it's about you showing up and continuing to try. That's going to get you to where you want to go. All right, I'm off my soapbox now. <laughs> now, I hope you all know how eager we are at Pioneer to help you with your goals. You know, we have our, our in-branch staff, we have our call center, we have our PTMs, we have our My Pioneer Personal Assistant app. We are geared up and ready to help you with your goals, to get you set up for success, to help you find the right um, tools to get you there. Um, but I also always want to make sure you guys know about this awesome partnership. We have a Green Path. Um, they specialize in helping people get out of debt and improve their financial wellness. So if you are feeling like, man, I'm not even a place to make a goal, I'm just surviving right now, I really encourage you to reach out to Green Path uh, to get back to a fresh start, to make those money resolutions stick by speaking to one of their financial experts. The call is free for our members and confidential. Um, so if you guys want more information about them, I'd be happy to share that. It's on our website. Um, but these guys are amazing. They're not, they're nonprofit. They are there to help people. And so if you're in a place where you need that help, they're going to be there for you as well as us at Pioneer. We're happy to help you guys however you need it. All right. That's a lot of feel goods. So at this point, <laughs> that's all I have for you guys. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed those tips and those tricks, that advice. I hope it's helpful. Um, if you wouldn't mind sharing, I'd love to see your key takeaways from the webinar. Uh, maybe something new you learned or something you want to share with others, perhaps. And again, thank you so much for your patience with my voice. <laughs> I'm very glad it didn't go out. I think we're on track to that. I have another webinar in the morning, so I'm going to have to rest this. <laughs> I sound like Adele or something who's like taking vocal rest and stuff. <laughs> 